But first off, I think most people underestimate as adults mm. how much they can learn, how much new things they can learn, and how quickly they can get deep. Right. Uh, especially with experience, you start to learn what knowledge really feels like, what mm. clarity feels like, and what it feels like when you don't have it. Right. So I spent about uh, you know, six months or so teaching myself aerospace engineering fundamentals, just reading textbooks, doing problem sets, meeting smart people. Uh, showing them my work and saying, can you check this? Mm. And pe you know, people are really generous with their time, especially right. when you tell them that, uh, tell them what you're trying to do. And so I learned a ton from that and I got at least to the point where I could judge the people I might hire. Mm. And we went through, so we went through it an exercise where the first couple of people in the company, so critical, mm. uh, and I wanted the best people in the industry. So I asked everybody I met in aerospace, if you had a magic wand and you could wave it and you could get anybody to come work on this project, who do you want? And you start to see what names come up. And then which ones come up and multiple times. Exactly, exactly. And so a, a little over a year ago, we had about half a dozen candidates for the, the first couple roles in the company. And we flew them all out to the Bay Area, got a conference room for a couple of days and said, let's tear this whole thing apart technologically and also tear apart, like, what are the lessons of how you build an airplane company? Huh. And you can tell, you know, you sit in a room with half a dozen really, really bright people. And these these people are like the inventor of the personal jet, the chief engineer from Adam Aircraft. Which was what, the, Eclipse? What was the first, is that the first person? Well, sort of. The first, yeah. one that, the first one that's successful is really looking like the Cirrus jet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the chief engineer from Spaceship One and Spaceship Two, wow. whose airplane is in the Smithsonian. Like, this was a high-level room. And you uh, you spend a couple days with those people, and you quickly figure out um, who are the ones you really want to work with. Mm. And so we hired two people out of that room. Uh, they became my chief engineer and my CTO. Got it. And from that point on, we just kept the same process of, like, find the best people in the world to come work on this. Uh, you know, people go into aerospace because they either want to build a rocket and go and colonize Mars, mm. in which case they should go work at SpaceX. Right. Or they want to work on fast airplanes. Right. In which case they should come and work at Boom. Hey, everybody. Let me take a moment to thank my friends at Squarespace. They make gorgeous websites in minutes, and it is so affordable. You know, I do these crazy ideas where I'm just like, I say to my team, hey, I want to do something where I just like invite a bunch of angel investors to come away for the weekend and we'll we'll shoot clay pigeons and we'll go on hikes, we'll play poker, and we'll talk about being angel investors. So I say, yeah, go get the domain name Launch Angel Summit, and I just say that in a chat room somewhere. And literally, before I write the copy for the website, my team emails me back what you see on my screen right here, which is this gorgeous, they said, well, we assume you want to do it up in nature because you said, hey, maybe in Napa or maybe in Sonoma. They find some stock images of gorgeous photos. They put it in the background and we say launch Angel Summit, 50 Angel Investors, two days of discussions, debate, learning, hiking, and late night poker, Northern California, request an invitation. We get that up in seconds and it looks like something that was made by one of these agencies you know, that you spend tens of thousands of dollars and they have tons of templates. And now when I launch five or six different pages on here, including selling tickets or selling t-shirts, they have e-commerce. Um, it's intuitive and easy to use. There's no coding required. And I said to my team, you know, listen, we need to have these professionally state-of-the-art websites, but I want anybody on the team to be able to update the site because this is one of my pet peeves. If I need something changed on the website, we constantly come up with some innovation inside of our company and then the public doesn't know about it which what I tell my teams and I tell my startups I invest in is, if you don't take credit for what you're doing, then nobody knows you have to take credit. It has to exist on the web so that you can tweet it, so that you can Facebook it, so you can share it, so people can read it. And it has to look beautiful and gorgeous. So everybody in my organization now knows how to use Squarespace. We just did a little primer. It took 15 minutes. We put all eight people around a computer and said, here's how it works. Here's how to add pages. Here's how to use a template. No credit card is required if you want to start a free trial right now. And I'm begging you. Go to squarespace.com and do it because it will change your life forever. You can get a free domain if you sign up for a year, which is ridiculous. And when you do decide to sign up for Squarespace and put in your credit card, which you don't have to do in the beginning, you can just use the offer code TWIST and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. It is state-of-the-art, secure, stable, and trusted by millions. It's some of the most respected brands in the world, including my own, uh, use the product. That's all you need to know. It gets my highest, highest, highest uh, endorsement. We use it for the Launch Incubator site. We use it for the Launch Festival. We use it for Launch Hackathon. We use it for the Launch Angel Summit. We use it for everything, and we love it. It's so easy to use, and it's so gorgeous. Thank you at Squarespace. Squarespace.